What's up you guys, Zoeb here for OneGlanceTrader.com and in this video I've got another brand new trading view indicator release called the OGT Bollinger Bandwidth Indicator and as with all my indicators whether it's on MT4, MT5 or TradingView they are 100% free and in this video we'll be going through where you can find this on the TradingView platform as well as going through the reasons why I created this indicator, how it helps me trade, the input settings and how to find profitable setups. So if you like the sound of that, make sure you smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe for this video. And as you would imagine, I get a number of requests to either update my indicators or create brand new indicators, whether it's on MT4 or TradingView. I've tried a number of TradingView kind of pine script um, coders and this particular indicator has been created by someone on, on Fiverr.com and I've used him and I'm using him to create some other stuff for me which again will also be free on this channel but if you want to create your own customized trading view indicator click the first link down below that will take you to his Fiverr page say you've come from the OGT YouTube channel and when you put your brief in uh, he'll give you a he'll give you a discount. So make sure you click that top link down below if you want to create your own custom indicators because they're not that expensive to make. If I'm really honest with you, and I'd love to create all the indicators you guys message me, but you know I just don't have the time uh, and the resource and the capability to do that. So check out check out um, the link inside the description. Tell him you come for me, and he'll sort you out with a um, uh, with a very good price. So as I mentioned. This is the Bollinger Bandwidth Indicator. And firstly, how can I get this indicator? So all you've got to do is click on the Indicators and Strategies section. And if you type in OGT, um, um, you will find here, these are obviously my scripts. And then you've got the ones in the public library. So it's not showing at the moment because I've literally just um, just added it in there. So it will be there uh, inside inside the next you know 10 10 15 minutes but by the time you watch this video it will also be available but it's called the Bollinger Bandwidth Indicator so when that becomes available inside the public library you can click on that and obviously check out my videos on the uh, trend dashboard uh, and the Bollinger Bands trend indicator as well so um, you know some really really good indicators from there so that's how you'll find it type it in and, and you'll see it inside the uh, public library um, so when the indicator uh, loads on the screen, you've kind of got you've got a line which basically shows the percentage difference between the upper Bollinger Band and the lower Bollinger Band, and it calculates the percent. So for example, at the moment, the current reading uh, you can see here is 0.21. So that is 0.21 percent. The, the difference between the price of or of of the upper and the lower and the percentage difference between the two. So this then basically shows you the line. And as you can see where there's areas of high volatility where the bands are expanded and far apart, the reading is at the top. And areas such as this one where they're very contracted, you've got a low Bollinger Band reading. And why is this important? So for those of you who use the Bollinger Bands, and there are many applications to the Bollinger Bands, I like to use the Bollinger Bands mainly around either a mean reversion. So if it hits the top band, it will revert back to the mean. And if it hits the bottom band, it reverts back up to the mean. But when you've got strong aggressive trends such as this one of high volatility, you can see here it tried to pull back but then continued going down. That's why you know, in any volatile market, these kind of mean reversion techniques don't don't really apply. So even though I like to use it with that alongside with divergence and all that kind of good stuff, what I also use the Bollinger Bands um, indicator for is to understand, are we in a period of low volatility? So where things are kind of ranging and calm, such as kind of this area over here, or are we in periods of high volatility, such as kind of this this example over here? And what I want to do is, is I want to identify very quickly, am I in a high or low uh, volatility area? And what I want to do then is capitalize on when we're in a low level of volatility, um, because what generally happens if you're in an area of low volatility, um, it usually is preceded by a massive move uh, uh, into high volatility. So this is not a directional indicator, doesn't tell you where it's more likely to go up or down. All it's going to tell you is, is 
more than likely there is going to be a big move uh, inside the market. And again, I've got the USD JPY one hour chart here. It can you can use on any instruments, whether it's crypto, stocks, anything you want. Uh, in indices and the same logic will kind of apply because the Bollinger Bands is a technical tool that can be applied to any chart and what this indicator is doing is measuring the difference between there to show you high levels and low levels of volatility. Now the difference with this particular indicator compared to or Bollinger Bandwidth indicator compared to other indicators or bandwidth indicators that are out there what it allows you to do is basically set the threshold of the low volatility or, well it lets you set a threshold so if the indicator reading is below that threshold it will then in this default example show you in red and we'll go through this inside a second so what it's saying here based on the settings i've put in is whenever we're inside this red area we're in a period of low volatility and whenever we are above Above my threshold, the indicator will turn green, showing you areas of high volatility. And if we take this example here, you can see that the bands are very contracted together. Um, and as you can see there, we have got that red kind of area here that we are in low volatility. And then as it expands out into this downward move, you can see that uh, we go from red to green uh, because the indicator reading is above my, um, um, is above my threshold. So that's kind of how it works. And you may be asking the question is, how do I know what threshold to set it at? And this is what this black line comes into play. And this black line here is a very useful tool when you're looking over like a large period of data to kind of set where that threshold is. And what this black line does, it looks at the last 100 bars and it then will draw a line at the lowest possible point. So if we, if you look in this left-hand corner, um, uh, top left-hand corner here, in this case where it says 0 0.16, this area here, that the lowest point, which was this area here in these last 100 bars was 0.16%. So, so it's saying, so it would have been at this area over here, this is the lowest level. And then as you can see here, if we look, the next 100 bars over here, you can see that it's gone from 0.17, I'm looking at the top left hand corner, um, oh sorry, 0.13 to 0. Um, sorry, 0.11% to 0.13%. So the low has kind of changed over, over the last um, uh, over the last 100 bars. And what this what this does here is you could zoom out or zoom in depending the more data you have, the better. Uh, you can get the crosshair up and you can kind of see where where the low is or where the kind of average is and this is where you should be setting it. So I think here in this example, I've got it set to 0 0.17. So, you know, if I look here, 0 0.17, if I can get that, I'm looking on the right hand side there, there. So that is the line there because I've basically taken uh this this area this line over here at 0 0.17 and it's dropped to 0 0.13 and now uh and, and 0 0.11 so i've kind of taken that as the kind of level so any time the read uh, the reading or the bollinger bandwidth indicator drops on 0 0.17 or below the indicator will turn red and then when it comes out of 0 0.17 percent the indicator will turn green so what you'll need to do is is every time you go to a different different pair or or stock or commodity or whatever it is that you're trading and you change the time frame you'll need to rebalance that threshold because the bollinger band with the bollinger bands will obviously change as you go to different time frames so that's something to bear in mind but you'll have to do that with any indicator and that's the challenge with um, the other indicators it just shows you the line right where this takes it one step forward and provides you with that kind of areas over here and depending when i release this that uh, there'll be indicate um, alerts and stuff so you know when you're in a quiet state versus a high volatile state etc inside there so if we go through the settings uh, very quickly it's a very basic indicator you can set the length 
and the close and your standard deviation of your Bollinger Band. So if you'd like to use three standard deviations or a different moving average um, to create your Bollinger Bands, you can do that and then the bandwidth indicator will adjust. And then you've got your setting here of what you want that low threshold to be. So it's done in decimal, but it's basically a percentage. So in this example, it's 0.1%, 1.7% 1 uh, is the difference that between the upper and the lower Bollinger Bands as my threshold. So if the reading is below your threshold, it will then show a low volatility, which will be in red. And if your if the indicator reading is above the threshold, then it will show you high volatility in green. So that's basically what it is. You can change these colors and similar to the Bollinger Band, but you can, you can change the, um, um, the weight of the line and you can change the low volatility line as well. So that low volatility line helps you decide what your low volatility percentage should be. And again, it will change on time frame. So I wanted to give the user some intelligence or an indication of what have been the recent lows or what's the lowest reading the indicator has been, which gives you a starting point to work from and then you can adjust accordingly. So what I've done here is, so as I said, we've got the USD JPY one hour chart. Again, you can pull any chart up and you can do the same calculation. And um, I've taken a screenshot of this just because it makes it easier for me to draw. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at all the areas where the Bollinger bandwidth has turned red and how you can potentially use this. So as I said, I'm looking for areas of where there is low volatility, i.e. below 0.17% in this example. And as you can see in this area here, we get the first kind of red signal. Don't really like to call it a signal, but it, it's there. And as you can see here that, you know, we had, you know, a nice little squeeze of the band and then we had this move a move to the downside. And as I said, that this isn't a directional indicator, this is a volatility indicator, and it's telling you that a potential move is, is likely. It may not happen, but it's something to be ready for. And whether you're already in the trade or you're just about to jump in the trade in terms of take profit, stop loss levels, this can potentially help you with that as well. So we've got another low area there which is this area here and then you know we've seen this big big spike up here which is um big spike up there which then shows the indicator reading going high there then we've got another area over here which again you can see by this tight squeeze of the band periods of high level of volatility are followed by low levels and vice versa and then we see another move up here. So even if you got in at this level, this whole move was a nice little, you know, upwards trend in there. And then what we've got here is, we've got this long period of low volatility here, which you can see by this area here. And kind of the longer the period of, uh, of low volatility, you know, the more aggressive move. And you can see here that this was the highest reading, which then gives you this kind of move here. I'm not too sure what that is in pips, probably a couple of hundred pips, if I had to guess, uh, in terms of that particular move here. And then you've got another short burst here to the upside, short burst here on this level here to the upside. So that is how the logic of this indicator works, is that you can see here in this, fairly basic example that you know every time we've had the Bollinger bandwidth indicator drop below 0.17 and identify 0.17 by using this this black line to give me an indication of where low periods of volatility have been in the past for this instrument for this time frame um, we can see that we have seen an increase up in volatility after uh, after that effect so the way I would use this indicator is um, is obviously wait for we get into an area of low volatility, which is where then you'll start paying attention to it more closely. And then first thing I would look at is have a look and see how long the period of low volatility was. If it is very small, as you can see in these three areas over here, generally you wanna be trading in the direction of the trend. 
for example. Here we can see we've had a move up. Then we get a consolidation, a move up, consolidation, a move up. And that there is how I would use it in this particular example as well. We've had a down move. We've had some consolidation and another down move. So when you've got short bursts of vol um, low, volat uh, low volatility, majority of the time, and I ain't got the stats, but you know, from being in the market for a number of years now, that shows me that there's, you know, you'll either get the flag motion where you've got a move up and then you've got a flag over here. You've got another move up, another flag. So you've got that element there of a push up, consolidation, a pause, and then another push up. So Elliott wave traders, all that kind of stuff in there. You can utilize this as part of that strategy as well. The second thing is when you've got areas of high volatility like this, I mean, not high volatility, sorry a low level of volatility for a huge amount of time. And in this case, you know, this has been the longest number of bars we've been in this area since uh, since sort of the past previous price action. Here is you're a going to see, I think, a bigger move most of the time. And secondly, it's harder to predict the direction. So there you'll probably need to understand. I would imagine you will have some sort of divergence over here where, you know, your MACD is showing higher. Uh, your price is showing high highs and the MACD is showing low lows. Then you then you get some consolidation at this area. If that was the case, then I would imagine going down. Or secondly, as you guys will probably know through my um, pivot strategy, miss, miss pivot strategy, you probably have some missed pivots here. Then you've got a pivot hit here, pivot hit here, and then you've got a move down. And this area here would have told you more than likely that price probably would have wanted to hit these areas. So again, you can use this indicator along with the miss pivot strategy to help you to say, okay, now we've got low areas of uh, areas of low volatility. We've got two miss pivot levels um, and then price could go down. I've just generalized that. I've made that up. But for those of you who know my channel well enough, will know what I'm talking about over here. So those longer areas are kind of harder, uh, harder to work out. But then as you see here in this particular example, um, you've got low area, low area here. Um, again, you could imagine that this should have pushed down and you might have got stopped out, but at this area over here, now you've got this uptrend again, again, you've got another push up over, over here. So when you've got low levels of volatility for a short space of time, the gut feel based on other indicators or not doing other analysis is to go with the direction of the trend. If you've got a low areas of volatility over a long period of time in relation to previous price action, look at divergence, look at missed pivots to help you identify which uh, which area that you wanted to go in. So I hope that's given you some background in terms of the indicator. Um, please comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you like it. And again, go pick up the indicator. It's absolutely free. And if you want to create your own trading view indicator, again, first link inside the description uh, to head over uh, to head over to um, to to the guy I use on Fiverr really really competent really really good um, and uh, tell him you come for me so therefore he'll give you a, uh, a discount so hope you like this video make sure you like subscribe and comment and I shall see you guys in the next video